those things tend to be more connected than, say, greed, secret agendas, hang-ups, judgments. Those things tend to be of a darker nature. So, and you know, we, we so want to be in the arena of compassion, communion, communication, love. But so often we are stroking the bone of nastiness. And that's why it causes us to feel. Because we're not doing what we really want to do. We don't really want to complain and be separate from one another and have problems with each other and, and conflict and, and unclarity. That's not really what we want. But when we indulge in that, it makes us feel like crap. And oh, wow, good. What else is it going to make you feel like? It's not what you want. You want harmony. But you, you perpetuate conflict. How can one live this way? I don't know. That's an individual, obviously. I mean, there has to be at some point the courage to see this with divine intelligence instead of this crappy victimhood consciousness that we go after everything with. You are divine intelligence. Why act like a victim to the It doesn't make sense. It saddens me. That's what I think is my only source of sadness. It's how brilliant everybody is. And, and it seems that they don't care. They don't care to experience and expand in that. They just go about drinking beer and watching TV. It's like, but, but your life is happening. Get into it. Boom, my life's boring. It's, well, then let the intensity of life back in. You'll find your life's probably better than Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, and Barack Obama's all together. Wrapped up in one little pie. Live with your dignity. It's nothing to stew about something to give up the stewing for. Right? It's right now. Where are you? You're never anywhere but right here, right now. Your being is never anywhere other than right here, right now. But your chattering mind can be in the past, which is no longer around. It's not here. Or in the future, that's not here either. So it's never in tune with being. How often are you thinking about this moment? usually past and future because it's really the domain of the chattering mind it cannot be here we're trying to force it to where this is what it is war 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 here we go craziness it's not just in Afghanistan anymore it's in Colorado Springs it is in your neighborhood and this is, and, and you know, I'm not, I'm not really afraid of that, but I'm ready to speak to it. I'm ready to go, I've had enough. How about you? I've had enough of this believing all this bullshit in my head. I've had enough of you. I'll just be the being. And I, I will, it's very funny because there is no need to forgive if you're in a state of love. There's not, what would you forgive? Forgiveness is a way of keeping tally. They're, they're selling us more more of the same crap we're trying to get away from. This is more uh, creatively packaged now. Politically correct. You know what that caused everybody to do? Lie to each other. Stay in your own box. Uh-huh. Lie to each other. Oh, what a pretty dress. Instead of, woman, Good. What the hell are you wearing? Makes you look like a balloon. What are you doing? You know, we don't get to do that anymore. We have to be polite. Polite is a lie. I remember I was I was standing there with a friend of mine. We were standing in a parking lot, and we both used to work in the same place. And the owner of the place, 
who did not like me one bit. She did not like me at all. I knew it, she knew it, everybody knew it. <laughs> Comes walking up, you know, we haven't, I mean, he was living in Colorado too, and this was, we both worked at the same place in California. And we were both in the same place at the same time, and she hadn't seen him in a while. She didn't really care to see me, but I just happened to be there with him, so I got to witness. She was ecstatic. Oh, Justin, it's finally good to see you again. Hey, we're all going out to dinner tonight. Would you like to come, Justin? Then you got to be polite, right? And you can come, too, if you like, Chris. You know what my response was? Why are you asking me if you don't even want me to go? You want your dinner to suck? Because I'll go if that's what you want. I... You know, and, I, and I basically made the statement that, you know, look, you don't need to be polite to me. Be honest. Polite is for someone without courage. Honest is for the truly courageous. The truly enlightened. Honesty. They don't worry about what's going to happen or who's going to say what or... They don't care. They'd rather be honest than deal with any chaos at all. Because if you're honest, the chaos that comes to you is pretty easy to handle. But when you're lying, because, you know, to be polite, then the chaos that comes at you is the one that really you can't stand, you hate, you don't want it around you. you it's the one that makes you pull your hair out, makes you age, makes you, you know, makes you age. It kills you, stresses you out, stress kills you. Fear kills you. Because it is shutting down. It is isolation from source. It is not a thought. It's not a concept. It is an act of isolating ourselves from the source of life. That which gives us well-being. When Jesus says, the one thing I wish for you more than all other things is that you have life and have it more abundantly. What do you think he means by that? Or what any of them say? Because they all pretty much say the same. Life more abundantly. What does that mean? More Oreos? Another pair of shoes? More friends? Or does it mean more divine consciousness? More answers? More clarity? More energy? More freedom to move about the universe that made you? What does it mean? Is it a far-fetched idea that you could be on the other side of the universe in just a blink of an eye? Really? Not really. Because you know what? You can't prove you can't. I mean, the fact that you're sitting here makes anything absolutely possible. How'd you get here? How is it you have something called life? How is it you have the ability to have perception and even an opinion? Where'd you get that? Do you know? No one knows. Science doesn't even know. And we run from that fact. We're afraid of the not knowing. Right? So it cripples our, our ability to see. All we see is what we think. Here's another example. Here's a good one. Your parents. When you were growing up with them, you were a troubled kid. And you moved out. Their perception of you is what it's always been. You go out, and not only do you have an epiphany, you have a total mind-blowing, life-altering event. You come out of it a completely different person. Wired completely differently wanting to be honest and true and, and forthcoming. And they don't see it. They see their impression of you. They're stuck in their brain. They see their chatter. They don't see you. 